before we get started, it's Sunday, so we got to do it right. I love this woman. Yeah. To be fair, on the way here, I was listening to drill music. I was listening to Fabio Foreign, the little TJ, and I was so hyped. And I was like, yo, this is going to be the intro to the song. And then I thought about an individual. Shout out to Kay. I was thinking about Kay from the Life Factory. And I said, if she hears this, she's probably going to be like, yo, I got my grandbaby in the car. I have somebody important in the car. I've been telling them about Gavin, hopefully. And he's over here playing some bang, bang, shoot him up music. And we cannot have that. So I decided... Snow Allegra is better, so let's listen to Snow. All right, we got to turn this up. This is my second time recording this. Why? Because the first time was terrible. I was doing this first thing, the first go around. Everything was cool. I was doing too much talking. I thought about my sister-in-law saying, yo, it takes you too long to get started. So today we're going to get straight into it. Um, If you have not already, I encourage you, please run back. To episode one um this is the Phot how to build your perfect photography business series this is episode two lesson two episode one we talked about finding your photography niche and setting up your business hold on snow i love this part The first first lesson, the introduction to everything was how do you find your purpose? Purpose is so important when you start in your photography business, right? You don't know what you're doing. You don't know why you're doing this, but you just picked up a camera that lets me know that you might not be doing this for too long. Um, I know my purpose. My purpose is to help people tell their stories, help businesses, help other people tell their brand story through photography. I figure out different ways of giving back. Um, I'm currently working on a project on displaying people that look like me. That is my purpose. I know my purpose. I love my purpose. I'm trying to live within my purpose. So with that, I encourage you to find your purpose. I encourage you to listen to lesson one. This is the main camera. I don't know why I'm looking somewhere else. Listen to lesson one and figure out how do you find your niche so we can set up your photography business. With that being said, this is episode two. We're going to be talking about equipment. Let's get started. Oh, uh. Oh shit. Sorry for the curse word. I told y'all. This is why I need people in here helping. Welcome to the paid and exposed Sometimes you gotta do it yourself. A podcast about helping our community of photographers to reach the next level in their business. We just leveled up. Hosted by Key. AKA shout Kino. out, shout out. And Charlotte photographer, Gavin B. We unscripted, we keep it real. Let's get it. Wrap it up. What? Shut up. Wait, so I can't pay you an exposure? No, 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 no. You absolutely cannot. Um, Welcome to episode two of the Paid and Exposure Photography Podcast Series, How to Build Your Perfect Photography Brand, or whatever the title we came up with. I'm your host, Gavin, a.k.a. Coke, a.k.a. whatever you want to call me. Um, I am a Charlotte photographer, born and raised in Charlotte in the Queen City. Um, I am the owner and... I'm the owner of No More Pie Studios, which is where I'm at right now recording this podcast. Um, sorry, I got my keys over here. Somebody's like, yo, what is he over there doing? Um, today is going to be an interesting day. We're going to be talking about equipment. Um, equipment is the reason why you as a photographer is going to hate this business. Um, it's probably going to be one of the one of the three reasons you're probably going to hate this business. Um photography is expensive as hell. Sorry, I gotta get that out the way. That it is expensive, right? When I look into this room right now, I'm looking into a camera, um, which is my second camera, right? It's the second camera I ever owned. Um, I'm looking to this camera. Shout out to you over here with the wide angle. That is my newest camera. Um, I have a light right above me. I have a light right here. I have a light directly behind the other camera, which is not on, which is probably why I'm not lit up correctly. Um, we're talking about a mixer. We're talking about mics. And I would not have none of this stuff in this random 
uh, equipment and furniture in here. I wouldn't have none of this if I was not a photographer. Uh, photography has afforded me amazing, some amazing things. I've traveled, you know, around the U.S. I've been out of the country to photograph. Um, I have a podcast now and I'm trying to grow it even more. So for every photographer, if you're listening, let me do some shout outs. Um, if you are a photographer and you're listening, I encourage you, please go check out No More Pie by Gavin B. It's a Facebook group. And if you're a Charlotte photographer, I need you to go to the website right now. Please go to PaytonExposurePodcast.com and sign up for Charlotte Photographer of the Year. Um, I am not going to be selecting a winner. The only thing I'm good for is selecting the prizes. And I've been working on it and I've been getting, I done got us some studio time. I done got us some trophies. I done got us some merch. I done got us a couple of stuff. So I need you to sign up. And if you don't want to sign up or if you don't think you're ready, just sign up anyway because I don't care. Two, um, send it to another photographer and say, hey, I thought about you. I would love for you, you know, to fill this out. And let's all grow. Um, and also, I want to shout out to Photo PPZ. I want to make sure that's the right name. Um, shout out to those guys. They actually are a lead generation um, company for photographers. They are based now out of Charlotte. Um, they're starting their new startup. They're coming at the top of 2022. And the whole idea is that um, when clients come looking for photographers, you can have your profile set up and you can directly reach out to individuals and say, hey, yes, I actually am available that day. Yes, I'm actually available within that budget. Yes, I can accept your gig. And yo, it's simple. You sign up, you tell you upload a little portfolio. You say, hey, this is my style. You see the leads, you accept the leads, you keep it moving, you get paid. Keep that in mind. Everybody loves money. Um, all right, let's get to these doggone photography stuff before y'all leave me. Shout out to our first time listeners, last time listeners. Please go listen to episode 100. This is 101. And let's get started right now. So how do you decide on what is your photography, your f camera brand? Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm focused now. How do you figure out what's going to be your camera brand? Me? It was a gift. I'm keep it real. There's no deep answer here. Look, I, when I was coming out, um, it was only Canon, Nikon, and Sony still was doing the cyber shots, which was my first, first, first camera. Um, so Sony wasn't really hot right then. And then, of course, there was some other camera brands, but the main two was just Canon and Nikon. Now, I landed on Canon simply because my dad got tired of me using his Canon and he bought me one to get me up out of his face. Win for me, dog. Why? Because I had no idea. Totally blessed. Totally um, just in a great situation where my dad bought me a great camera. He bought me a Canon 7D, um, you know, and I had no idea what I was doing with it. So I'm not here to brag about it because I didn't know what I was doing. I was doing a lot of trash work. All right. Let's keep it. Let's be honest. I was putting out a lot of BS. It was awful. Disgusting. Terrible. Um, shout out to everybody that was booking me, though. And I still was giving out bad work, but I didn't know it was bad. I loved photography at that time, but I got stuck with a Canon. I haven't switched since, um, you know, and so I look at people and I say, you need to learn the benefits of the brand you want to select. Don't put too much thought into it. Besides the fact, look into what's the lead. Let me give you an example. What's the benefits of it? Let me give you some examples. Um, Sony right now, they're known for being great with video and low light. Um, they eye focus system is super cool. That's a benefit shooting in low light, recording in low light, something that Nikon is not the best at, something that Canon is working to get great at. But Sony is like the leader in that. Drawback on Sony is some of their colors is funky. I'm gonna be real with you. They don't want to tell you the truth, but them colors is super warm. And I know somebody's like, oh, I can fix that in post. You could. If you want, it still don't look right to me. Personally, to me. I think all I think the best colors out of everybody is Canon. Um, no color is better than the Canon 5D Mark IV to me. Now, mind you, I haven't shot with a 1D or all those lines. I don't got the bag for that. But um, Canon is known for their colors. Um, they have quality, top of the line quality stuff. But guess what comes with top of the line quality stuff? It is expensive as hell. Super expensive. Really expensive. Disgustingly expensive. Um, you talking about spending thousands on cameras, spending thousands on lenses. And when you go off off market, off brand with some of the lenses, sometimes it's not as great. So keep that in mind. Nikon is one of those things like it's right in the middle, right? Um, it's affordable. It's a lot of options there. 
Um, I don't know what the hell Nikon good at. Sorry, Henry. No shots. Hold on. Henry probably going to whoop my tail for that. I don't know what Nikon is good at, but I know a lot of people produce great work with Nikon. So don't trip. Don't cuss me out. So, but think about it. Um, and you got to know what you, what you're looking for. Um, like I said, I selected my first camera because of my, my pops. Now, when I was young and starting out in photography, I had a seasoned photographer and editor who looked at my camera and said, Hey, you got a great camera, upgrade your lenses. Now I knew I was going to get one lens and then I was going to make a decision if I wanted to switch. When I spent the money on the lens, I then settled in on, I really like Canon. The quality was just amazing to me. Just how sharp my stuff was, how colors for me back then. Um, I was the guy who was bumping saturation all the way up because I was really into that. Um, that was super important to me. So I just stuck with Canon. Um, don't be afraid, especially if you get an intro camera, don't be afraid to switch later. And don't be listening to all these people who try to trash talk other brands besides me um, and say like, yo, don't go this way, don't go that way. But kind of know, if you know your purpose, you know what you're going to want to shoot, then you'll know what camera is best for you and what you might want to try to get into later. Um, and then, you know what? I hate this question. I get it every, at least twice a month, two or three times a month. Hey, Gavin, I'm, I'm starting out. Um, I need a new camera. What camera do you, su do you suggest? I'm starting out in photography. Pick what you can afford. <laughs> That is the shortcut above above all shortcuts. Pick what you can afford. Get started. Look here. Um, I always preach this. We've been preaching this the last 100 episodes, and I'm going to preach it for the next 100 episodes. Progress over perfection. Get started. Figure it out. And you're going to make do. That's, what, that's the whole thing about entrepreneurship, right? You figure out what works. You figure out how you can get better, and you figure out the next step. So get started. Pick out a camera. If you got $500, cool. Find your camera for $500. Why? Because when the time comes and it's time to upgrade, then you'll be able to get you another camera. And then you don't have to have such a big investment in one brand that you feel like you need to stay so you can use other lenses, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, so when you do start off, though, equipment is important because uh, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Equipment is important because it's certain things you already need um, when you starting off as a photographer. Remember, we're, this whole thing of this is me talking about how to use, create the perfect photography brand for you. Um, you're going to need a camera, of course. Um, you're going to need a lens, of course. You're going to need batteries. And, a last, you're gonna need, um, and lastly, you're going to need memory cards. Don't get suckered into thinking that you need a bunch of other stuff. Stick with the basics. Get you a camera that you can afford. Get you an extra battery because nothing is worse than when you get started, you're doing something. Y'all y'all have watched this podcast enough to see a camera die on me because I didn't charge the batteries or the battery. I was just starting to stop in so much that a battery died. So get you some batteries. Get you a lens. Not all cameras come with a lens. Um, some of them you can buy just a body. AKA no lens. Some you get a kit lens. Kit lenses suck. So with that being said, you do might want to get a, another lens. Um, and memory cards. Memory cards are super important. There's all types of memory cards. Um, I stick with the SanDisk. We should do a post on like what's your favorite memory card. But I do the SanDisk, the Stream Pros. They super cool. Um, you'll know what type of memory card your camera takes. Um, be mindful of that. I got the Canon R5. That is this camera. Shout out to this camera, which is super dark now that I'm looking at it. But I got that. Um, I immediately, you know, I have hundreds of dollars in memory cards already. And so um, I was super excited. Sorry, I thought I heard somebody. And so I was super excited. I got this camera. I have everything ready. Um, and I see a memory slot and none of my memory cards fit in there. So I'm like, what the hell is going on? Right? Sit here, put a memory card in, doesn't work. I Google, guess what? It requires a whole new type of memory card. Guess how much this doggone camera memory card costs? Over $200, I was pissed. So now where I have memory cards that cost, all of my other memory cards cost just as much as this one. Now I have to afford, now I have to buy one more memory card. It was disgusting. I was terrified. I was mad. And it's expensive, so I can't lose it. And if I lose it, I'm going to cry. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. Um, So... Get those things, and here's my thing. If you're if this is your first camera, 
Don't waste a lot of money on a bunch of stuff. Don't have a $400 camera and then you go invest, you know, $1,500 on a lens and you don't even know why. Um, I still, it's, it blows my mind when I see photographers go out here and they buy lighting um, and they just starting out. Like why? Why do you need studio lights? If you don't even know how to shoot outside, why are you worrying about shooting in a studio? Um, it just blows my mind. People go and they buy triggers. They buy different type of lights. They buy modifiers. Um, they buy, you know, three different type of lenses and they don't have no idea why they ever do it. So what happens is what all photographers, are t it, ask any seasoned photographer, they'll all tell you the same thing. You start hoarding equipment. You have all this equipment. You don't need it. You don't know why you have it. And it's annoying. They got three tripods, one camera, and a kit lens, and the little light bulb studio lights. And they don't know why. So stop hoarding information. I mean, stop. Hoard all the information. Stop hoarding um, equipment. Get the equipment you need. As you become more of a seasoned photographer, you'll know like, hey, I could have nailed this shot better if I had this type of lens. Guess what? I have an 85 lens. It's on this camera right here. Um, I spoke to Adorama today about mailing it to him so I can get a better lens. Why? I love the 85. It's just too close. This camera right now is probably 8 to 10 feet away from me. And you see how close it is on my body. I don't like that. It's cool for video. The bokeh is dope. But when I get outside, it's it's a struggle. I'm so far off from my client. So I'm thinking about getting a 50. Um, I was talking to a photographer. Shout out to T Titus Higgins. Uh, me and him was chatting it up and... He heard what type of lenses I have. And he was like, uh, you should think about getting a 35. And I was like, yeah, I, well, I really don't really need it like that. He was like, nah, you'll need it for this, this, and that. He was like, just think about it. And I was thinking about it. Next thing you know, I go on a shoot and guess what? I'm like, damn, if I would have had a 35, this shot would be that much better. And I could not get it with what I had. That's the problem. So learn what you're doing. Learn what you need stuff for and do it that way. Keep that in mind. Um. And also, there's power in renting equipment. It's tons of places. Shout out. If you're in Charlotte, I know Biggs do it. I know Cardinal Images do it. Um, I was at a wedding one time in Georgia, and I was approached by the videographers who had a, a photography rental company. It's tons of places that actually will let you rent equipment before you buy it. Now, why is this dope? I want a 50, right? I've never, I've only shot with like the, the low end 50. Um, it'd be dope for me to go out there and get me the 50 that I want to buy, try it first and say, all right, yeah, I do like it. No, it's not as dope as I think. Um, I shot with, I think one lady let me borrow her 24 to 70, if I'm not mistaken. It was super dope to use it. I realized then like, yo, I really love this lens before I would never thought about using it, buying it, getting it. But now I'm thinking about like, Hey, I might rent that one more time to see if it's something I really like. So keep that in mind. Renting is super dope. Um, plus, you know, if you're going to renting is not expensive, right? I think biz camera does it for like 30 or $40. Some, it all depends, right? A day. So you spend $40 a day. You do a couple of shoots. You say, Hey, actually, I hate this lens. Guess what? You just saved yourself $1,500, $1,200 in trying to resell or return stuff. Because let me tell you something about these cheap cameras that you're going to buy. The cheaper ones that you're investing in, that's cool. It's beautiful. Um, and everything that you buy, no matter if it's this 85 lens that I spent almost two grand on, um, and I haven't had it for a year, guess what? It's worth like half of that now. Um, so keep that in mind. Stuff depreciates quick. Um, you almost got to find another photographer who's willing to get it off of you, right? And because they'll be willing to pay close to a brand new price or the refurbished price because they can get it right there. They can see it. But you know the headaches come and trying to sell to random folks. So keep that in mind as well. Um I already talked about when to upgrade, but let's dive into that a little bit more. Um, when do you need to upgrade? Sorry, I got a text, so I'm good. <laughs> By the way, you can rent this this podcast studio if you ever want to interview people, have a consultation, anything. So that's what I'm waiting on right now. But I figured I could work while we get this all done. So when do you upgrade? Upgrading is dope. Um you upgrade when you when your equipment is not working for you anymore. That's the best way to put it. Um, my 85 is dope. I loved it. Let me get tell you why I bought this 85. 
and I'm, I trash this lens so much. Cannon gonna whoop my ass. Um, I love this 85, but I got I got the 85 because I thought it was super dope, and I was listening to another photographer. Shout out to Jessica. And I was in her photography group on Facebook and she kept talking about it and bragging about it and bragging about it and talking, you know, and I was like, yo, I'm getting it. Bought it, never used it a day in my life. Bought it, loved it for like a week. Let me say that again. I was listening to somebody random on Facebook. I spent 17 or it was like $1,800 on a brand new lens. Um, got it, loved it for a week. I've had it for over a year. So for 51 more weeks, I have not liked it and have not loved it. It's cool. It's a dope lens. It does the job. It does not do what I wanted it to do. I have to be so far back off of my my clients that it bugs me. And now every time she posts it or if I see somebody else post it, I make sure I stress that out. Look, if you want this lens, it's dope. Just be prepared to be, you know, 15, 20 feet off of your client. You're going to have people that walk in front of you because they're not going to see you all the time. Not here to bash her because that's not her job. You know, her job is to get points. You know what I'm saying? From her referral links. And I respect that. Um, I should have did my research. I should have rented. Hence the rental. Um, so when I'm outside and I'm in front of a dope building and I'm doing an engagement session, um, this 85 does not work. So my equipment is no longer doing what I needed to do. So what do I do? I look into upgrading this 85. Maybe I go to a 50. Maybe I go to the 24 to 70. Maybe I go to a 35. I need to figure out what's the issue. What isn't it solving? What am I can do? Um, what can I do to make this better? Um, studio lights, right? Um, I have a Flashpoint 600. Can it do what this big, it's like a, a, a balloon light is doing? Absolutely, it could. But is it best suited for that? Absolutely not. Why? Because my Flashpoint will overheat. For those that I know, I got a Flashpoint 600, which is a battery-powered strobe, right? Uh, super dope because now I can carry it anywhere. I don't have to worry about plugging it into a wall, things of that nature. Um, it could do what I needed to do right now in the studio as far as lighting up uh, my room and lighting me up. Cool. Um, the problem is it overheats. This light does not overheat. And it's dimmable and it, you know, I can change temperatures. It serves so many different purposes. On this camera right here, it is a 24 to 105. I can get me a wide angle. Also, I can zoom in. So somebody's saying like, why are you going to swap out the 85 if you got this? This lens is old. Um, I don't believe in zooming in. I believe in stepping in. That's a whole nother subject. We'll get to that later. So the point I'm trying to make is when your equipment starts to fail you, that is when you personally need to look into upgrading it. Um, and once again, stop listening to people that is going to keep downing equipment, even though I killed the 85 this whole episode. Um, so many every photographer that I've recommended to go full frame. Um, excuse me. Every time I've mentioned you should go full frame, there's a group of photographers that always tell me, no, not necessarily. I'm not going to do that until blah, blah, blah. They give me all this pushback and I don't say nothing. I just. All right, cool. Bet. All of them that go and get a full frame, they always come back and say, yo, you was right. It's important. Um, sometimes your crop sensor won't get what your full frame can get. I don't have time. There's plenty of videos out there of like, what's the difference between a crop sensor and a full frame? You never say, you never really see a video where it's like, oh, my crop sensor can do this. Your full frame cannot. I'm just keeping a buck with you. So with that being said, know when it's time to upgrade and then upgrade when you're ready and when it's time, um, do not, if you're, this is, oh my gosh, what are gunshots? This is for whoever needs to hear this. Do not be a sucker and fall for equipment hoarding. Please do not. I don't know who needs to hear this. Oh my gosh. This is the biggest, this is the most important thing of this whole podcast episode. Sorry, I'm getting hyped now because this pisses me off. Every photographer goes out there and they start buying stuff because you get happy, right? You start making you a little bit of money, people hitting you up, they boosting you. Um, you start seeing all these dope ass photographers, excuse my language, K. You start seeing these dope photographers online, um, whether it's Manny Ortiz, whether it's Jessica Cabasi, whether it's Jessica Whittaker, whether it's uh, Brandon Waffle, uh, however you say his name. Um, I wish I knew more black photographers. So I could shout them out right now. Um, it's a ton of them. I just they just literally slip in my mind. 
sorry, whether it's uh, Dana Cole, whether it's Angela Perez, you start seeing all this dope stuff they do, right? Um, whether it's Prince Mason, um, I mean, I'm thinking of all the YouTube people because that's where this is going to be at. But you start looking at all this dope work and you start seeing the stuff they do. And then you know what you start doing? You just click their links. You start buying stuff. Oh, shoot. This only. And what we do is we really just look at, oh, this is under $300. All right. I can do two shoots. I can do one shoot. I can get this. And so you start buying up all this stuff and you never freaking use it. Um, Right. I remember um, I got my flashpoint. And I remember sitting there and I'm like, I have two alien bees in my closet that has been collecting dust for four or five years. I literally just put it up on Facebook. I was like, can somebody please come get these? I don't know why. I have triggers. Didn't know why. I had so many podcast microphones. Don't know why. Um, but it was really like I hear a review. I see it. Buy it. Right. Um, I've had plenty of lenses. Just had them. Don't know why. Um, the biggest thing I always notice is lights. We always think we can have too many, not enough lights. So right now I have a light above me. I have a light right here. And I have one, like I said, I already repeated this by the camera that's not on, but I have three lights in here, but I have two in my drawer um, in here also. I have a V flat that stays over here that never gets used. Um, it's so much stuff that you can buy. Buy what you need, not what you want. You can rent what you want because what's going to happen is you can rent it you might use it. You might not. You keep it moving. Shout out to um, I was talking to a photographer. Shout out to Designs by JK. And he was talking about how he has a throne chair and he really does not. You know, he was talking about how he started getting his throne chair because it got requested so much. And he was able just to charge it to his clients, which is dope for him. Right. Um, on the other hand, there's another photographer who was telling me he wanted to get a throne chair. Bro, don't listen to me, which is cool. And he buys the throne chair. In a month, he was trying to sell it. He hated the throne chair. Nobody was buying it. Nobody was trying to buy his upcharge for it. And he never got to make his money back. And he was pissed. And he didn't want to rent it to photographers because he wanted to be exclusive. Now, I think he just gave it away. You know what I'm saying? You got to be careful what you're hoarding. Do not be a hoarder. Please do not. Um, Yo, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for y'all today. Please let me know what y'all think about this. Um, Let me know... <laughs> I'm saying all this now while I'm trying to send back a Ronin uh, S kit to Adorama as well. Hopefully Adorama will write me back so I can get my money back. Anyway, I want to thank y'all for listening. I want to thank y'all for checking me out. I hope y'all like this. My phone has still been going off with music. Um, I appreciate y'all for, for listening, man. And um, you know what? We, next time, I'm going to holler at y'all. We're going to be hyped.